Hi everyone, welcome back to my classroom. The first part of this video is going to focus on essential tips and skills that my students need to understand and they need to develop for coil construction. So in the first part of the video, I go over some of the basics. The second part of the video, I'm going over a wide variety of decorative coil techniques that my students might be using in their coming project. We are making a skill builder, a small skill builder in class, and their skill builder is just helping them uh, to prepare them for the project that we're gonna be doing, which involves some slab work and shoe and uh, coil making some shoe forms. So in this uh, video, I'm going to be showing a wide variety of the decorative techniques and the latter part. Um, I show a little bit about the cleaning as well. And uh, I used to do a decorative coil, themed coil project that my kids, they would make something sculptural that was thematic. Um, I will put links to some of those videos uh, below in the description. We're not actually doing that project anymore, but um, some of the things still apply. I will also link in the video description, if anyone's interested, a little tutorial poster which goes over the building, the construction uh, techniques, and also um, the cleaning techniques. I just make these into little table tents that I put on my tables for the kids as reference. And also some that are uh, sh just showing the techniques as reminders uh, with some photographs. So I hope you find this helpful. Drop me any comments or questions um, in the comments below and stay safe, stay healthy and keep potting if you can. We're going to start off here with some of the very basics of, of forming coils and how to make it easier. The first item is prep your clay. So if you have scrap clay, you want to wedge it up so it's nicely incorporated, it's mixed, it's wedged, and it's ready to go. If you're using fresh clay off the block, a lot of times you can just cut that and you can start. Now the very first thing is you take your prepared clay and you're going to squish the clay into a sausage shape. Okay, that is the number one thing. It might sound obvious, but sometimes kids start rolling coils from odd chunks. So if you squish it first, so it looks like a coil to start with, it will make it easier. The second item is you want to twist. So you're going to have a, a slight twisting action of uh, twisting the ends in opposite directions. The reason for that is you want to keep the coil round as you roll it. And by twisting it and kind of almost giving it like a, a drill bit kind of a look, that will help you to keep it round as you roll. Okay, number three, when you go to roll your twisted coil, you really want to use your whole hand. So from the tip of your finger to the heel of your hand, you are going to have a nice long roll. Now after every couple of rolls, pick it up and again twist the ends in an opposite direction. You do that every few rolls and that will help to keep it round. Okay, number four. When you are using your whole hand, you can pull the clay apart to thin it or you can push the clay together to thicken it. So if I take my hands and I pull my hands apart, it will thin the coil. If I, let's say I have a thin spot, I'm gonna deliberately make a thin spot just to show you. Let's say I have a thin spot like right here and I need to thicken that part up, I can take my hands and push my hands closer together and that will help to thicken it and eventually it's gonna to go together right there, okay? And again, it's time to twist, okay. Six, number six, as you're working with the coil, if you keep a damp sponge on hand, you can periodically moisten it. Now, I'm not trying to go crazy, I'm not getting my table all wet, but by periodically moistening it, if you have little creases, or lines on the surface, it will help them to uh, go away. 
Remember that the clay dries out on the surface first and to avoid cracking, occasionally add moisture. I am going to break this one in half just because it is getting longer than I need it to be. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and twist this again. So remember, step number two was twist, but you have to repeat it every once in a while. So as you roll, again, use the whole hand from the heel of the hand to the tip of the finger and twist. Pull your hands apart in order to thin it and periodically, especially if you see surface dryness, you want to add a little bit of moisture with the sponge. Now, my goal is to have the coils an even thickness on my piece. If you are doing a decorative coil technique, your coil thickness should be the same thickness as the base of the pot. If you are doing one where maybe you're adding it to say a pinch pot that you're making, you could add much thicker coils because if you're blending it, both the inside and the outside, you could also pinch it up, okay? In the case of ours though, I want to thin it for a decorative coil. And here I'm prepping my clay for my base by wedging it, and I'm using a spiral motion, and then I rotate the clay perpendicular to it so I get it going in another direction as well. I begin by flattening it out and smoothing any cracks that I might have in the edge, and then I'm going to be using thickness strips. I have them in my class of different thicknesses and they're color coordinated. I'm going to be using the yellow ones which are 3 8 of an inch because that's the same thickness as my walls which I want them to be about as thick as my pinky. When you are rolling with the rolling pin you put the sticks on either side, use a clean and dry rolling pin and keep rotating and perhaps flipping your clay until it gets down to the thickness of the wood strips then you know you have a nice even slab. Then I'm going to compress the surface with a rib. Compression will smooth it and it is said that compression will make your clay stronger because you're smashing those platelets down. And lastly, I'm going to be trimming out the shape of the bottom and I can recycle that scrap by spritzing it down. Now I'm going to take my sponge. You can see my edge is not super smooth. So I'm going to take my sponge and smooth my edge a little bit. Okay. Now my coil is the same thickness as the base. Again, I'm going to moisten that coil because remember, it's dried out a little bit as it's been sitting there. Number seven, after I moisten it, I'm going to prep it to attach it to the base. Now anytime you're adding new clay to a base, you need to do this step. Or if you're adding new clay to maybe old clay where you're, it's been sitting for a little bit, you will need to do this step. And this step is going to be scoring. You can use a few different items to score with. You could use the small scoring rib that I made from the plastic card, which is in your personal tool bin. In the classroom tool bins, I have the serrated rib. So it's a rib that has teeth and scoring. When you do this, it will make a lot of lines and you kind of want to do basically like almost like little hash marks across it because you really want to activate the surface of the clay. So the scoring creates more surface area. Another tool is you could use the Kemper scratch wire brush, which also creates multiple lines at once. And that's uh, a, kind of fast because you can do a lot of lines. You could do the old school way, which I don't enjoy as much because it takes a long time. And that is to use a needle tool and do a whole bunch of hash marks. Whatever way you choose, it doesn't really matter as long as you're activating the surface of the clay by scoring. And then you're going to be adding some water for slip and the water gets spread out onto the scoring 
like this and now you have created slip. So when you add your first coil onto it, it's going to be active. Now once I have scored and slipped the base, I will also want to prep the coil which is going to sit on it. And all I want to do is prep the bottom side of the coil where it's going to touch. If, you're, if you have enough um, slip and enough moisture on one half, you do not have to put slip on both of them. So, oh, and I should mention, this base is a slab. When you're building with coils, I recommend that you either build on top of a slab base or perhaps a pinch base. I do not recommend that you build a coil base because coil bases do have a bit of a tendency to crack on people, at least on my students. All right. So here I have my scored bottom edge of that coil. I'm going to position it with the scoring down. Now, if I want to have this row just kind of end nicely, the trick is I'm going to cut this at an angle. So I'm going to take my knife and cut it diagonally. And that's maybe a little bit long. There we go. So I'm cutting it at a diagonal. I'm going to score the end. I'm adding water with my paintbrush and I am using the stiff bristled brushes that we use for clay in my classroom for adding slip. I'm not using a glaze brush. Okay, so I blended together the ends of that. Now what I'm left to do is I need to really anchor this to the base and for that you can use anything which is going to smoosh it together. You could use, say, your finger. If I use the back side of my fingernail on my index finger, that's helpful, right? That smooshes it together. If you prefer, you could use, I have the Kemper wooden knives in my classroom. Um, I like those because they have a nice little rounded end and that helps to smoosh it down to it. And this is so important for the very, very first coil. You've got to get it anchored really well. If you are uh, attaching, say, a coil again to a pinch pot, you would want to score and slip, and you're also going to blend it inside and outside if you're doing something that's not decorative. Now, in the case of our uh, little pots that we're doing though, I wanted to show a decorative technique. Now, when I have fresh clay to fresh clay, here's the other tidbit. I usually tell kids, if you're adding fresh clay on one day to fresh clay, you can get away with just adding slip when you go to join this. Um, usually, if I am uh, waiting for 24 hours and I'm adding maybe new clay to older clay, then I will 100% sure make sure that I score and slip them together. But in the case of this, you saw all I did was I added a little, little bit of slip to the bottom, a little bit of slip to the, the top coil, and then once again, I will blend. So these are some of the very, very basics that you need to remember when you're doing a coil pot. Now we can get into how we're going to be building our little skill builders so you can learn some of the techniques and uh, the variety of techniques that we're going to be using. Now students, you're just going to be working smaller as you make your coil sampler. Uh, I am going to be working just a little bit bigger because I'm going to try to show all sorts of techniques here. Now, regardless of what techniques you're using, I always recommend that you begin with the first coil being the anchor and it's anchored on there really well. For the next coil, I'm going to do a rope which is going to be made from two coils that are a little bit smaller. So let's see, I want one that's a little bit longer for this. I'm going to break this coil in half and I'm going to roll each of these coils a little bit skinnier than a pinky because ultimately the wall should be the same thickness as the base. So 
the coils will start off a little bit skinnier than the pinky because as I put them two together to make a rope, it will become thicker. Okay, here are my two slightly skinnier coils that I have. Now I'm going to add water with my sponge. The purpose of the water is doing a couple of things. First of all, it's wetting, it's wetting the surface, so I don't end up by cracking the surface as easily. But number two, it is going to be the thing that sticks these together. So as I hold them side by side, you can see that they're now stuck. Now to make this into a rope, I'm going to twist, but I'm going to basically start in the middle. I usually twist one half at a time because I think twisting the entire length is quite difficult sometimes. And I think it's easier to control when you're twisting one half. So there's one half and now I'm gonna to come to the other half and continue twisting in the same direction. So you can see this is starting to look like a rope. If I really wanted it to look, you know, like a fibrous rope, I could have textured the coils before twisting as well, which would be kind of fun. And I'm going to look at this and try to make it look fairly even with the amount of twisting. If I have some twists that are real loose and some that are tighter, I wanna to try to make it all look somewhat even. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to attach this to the top of this wall. I'm going to score, but not score the rope because scoring a rope is kind of challenging. I'm going to slip, and then I'm going to perch this right on the top of that. And again, if I want it to connect nice and evenly, I can slice it at a diagonal. So when I put these two ends together, they're a little easier to blend. Okay, so now blending the rope to the uh, rest of the pot, you kind of hold the top of the rope in place while you either take your finger or a tool and blend. I'm also going in there with a the little yellow rib just to smooth things as I go. Next, I'm moistening the next coil, and for this one, I'm rolling it up like a snail. I start by pinching one end kind of little and then start rolling it around on itself, trim it, and then you get a snail coil. And then I can place that on the wall. I'm going to make a few of them here. And of course you could think about altering sizes, big ones, little ones, um, having a little bit of motion or uh, rhythm to it. You can also make double-ended ones, like there, I twisted the ends opposite. You can be very decorative with that snail coil technique. Next, I'm going to make a uh, kind of a fence kind of a thing. I refer to it as a fence, at least. Back and forth, back and forth. You can make it bigger, smaller, vertical, horizontally. It's really quite fun. It has an organic feel to it. Here, I'm just placing it uh, side to side. Next, I'm making a rainbow. Now the rainbow is kind of cool because you start with like a little one in the middle and then I trim off the ends to make the rainbow. Uh, next, I'm going to take a coil and chop it into equal lengths and I'm going to form them into balls, but really they're gonna look like a raindrop. So you can see there, I'm putting a little tail on one edge because that little tail is going to be toward the inside of the pot and that's going to be what I'm going to use to blend this. As I build them, I can stack them on top of one another, periodically add a little bit of water there but I place these little raindrops on top of one another. Again, the tails are pointed toward the inside. Usually when I complete a whole row, then I need to start to blend this. You can use your finger, or I do like the end of that wooden uh, knife, that rounded end of the wooden knife. Now notice, I have one hand cradling the outside gently, and the other hand is blending. Never pinch or use one hand for the blending. You wanna use two hands, one to support, one to do the work of the blending. And then I'm just kind of corralling it in so it, it doesn't get a little bit bigger there. 
Anything you build in one session or a class bell, you must get blended on that class bell to make sure it will be blended together and not stiffen up. Now, I am putting a coil that is connecting the tops here, just a straight coil and connecting the ends. A straight coil will always give a little bit more stability to it, especially if you have irregular um, top edges there that are a little bit fragile. This is going to add some strength. Now, the interior is still quite messy. I have blended it, but to smooth it more, I can use a baby rib. And again, this is still in the plastic stage. As I blend with the rib, it's very helpful. Here I'm just rolling out a few more coils for a few more techniques. Sometimes working in a panel might be a little bit easier depending on the shape or the style that you want to do. Here um, I want to do some vertical uh, coils like what I did before, but this time they're all going to be cut. Now it's hard to take an individual coil and stand it up, so here I'm just putting them side by side. I'm keeping them all about the same length, and then I'm going to blend the less pretty side uh, together so it then becomes a panel because again individual coils won't want to stand up by themselves now you can cut the panel out in a particular shape if you have a pattern that you wanted to make a panel uh, fit you can you know trace that like I did and then again I'm going to be blending these coils so wherever they are touching the pot the bottom of that panel gets very well blended Next, I'm using a slightly fatter coil for this, so it's thicker than a pinky, it's more like my thumb. I'm just flattening it a little bit, so the thickness is still the same thickness, it's just going to be a little bit taller than the, the other coils. And for this, I'm doing a decorative technique where I'm stamping it or rolling it. You could carve into it if you wanted to put text or something like that. And again, scoring and slipping. Oh, I should have mentioned, the bottom part of this pot was done the previous day. So this is new clay to slightly older clay. That's why I'm scoring and slipping. Next coil, I'm going to be doing kind of a loopy type of thing. I think it looks kind of like, imagine shoelaces or something like that, or string that's dangling down. It's a little bit fragile, so you have to be careful about not pressing them if you pick them up. The next one I think is really fun. So this one I kind of refer to, I think it looks a little bit like leather, ribbon, something like that. It has one edge that is going to be skinnier. So I take my little pony roller and I'm holding it at a pretty extreme angle. So I'm, I end up with this like tapered sort of a, a V kind of a coil. And I'm just wetting the surface to make sure that it's not going to crack. And I'm kind of bringing it to a nice crisp edge. So that's the front edge. And then I'm just going to kind of wrap it around, wind it around on itself. And again, I'm kind of making a panel here. So there we go. So that's what that looks like. You've got this nice crisp edge, but notice the back edge is still fat. The back edge is going to be the important part that I have to blend. So as I uh, put this on there and I go to blend this, every place where clay touches clay must be blended. So the coil has to be blended to itself and it has to be blended to what's underneath and or above it. Okay, so that is maybe the ribbon or the leather kind of technique. Now I'm making another raindrop like I did before and here I'm just showing how you can insert that into the middle. So if you wanted to keep those real loopy areas and you wanted to put something decorative in there you could. Next I'm making a little slab and the little slab is going to be the same thickness as the walls. Here I'm using the half inch thick, again, a, about the same thickness as the rest of the coils. I'm using that pattern again, and I'm going to just kind of insert it in that little area, trimming that to get that to match. I am smoothing the edges, just like I did on the base. And here, I'm going to actually texture this, because if you wanted to have something textured, maybe to make it look like fabric, or you know any other sort of texture, it's kind of nice. So there's my texture. And as I uh, position this on there, of course I'm scoring and slipping, and I'm actually gonna dome this a little bit, so I'm going to flex it so you can see. You can take a slab and manipulate it and curve it and dome it and kind of sculpt it a little bit as you uh, go on there. 
Here I'm just adding a straight coil and I'm just connecting the ends of a couple of straight coils to get them to connect real nicely. And I'm starting to angle the edge inward. So I put the that top coil a little bit to the inside edge. Here I'm making another rope and I'm really going to make it come in by again putting it toward the inside edge of that top coil. And I'm blending with a little yellow rib there just to smooth out the inside some. Now I'm saving this last step here for the very end and that is adding a sculptural addition. Make sure that the clay is the same moisture as the pot itself when you're adding to it. Score, slip really well. Be very, very generous with the scoring and slipping. And then either blend with a tool or you could just blend with a paintbrush with slip to seal where it connects. And students, you are going to be making a small sampler to get the techniques down of some of these before we do our final project.